from Krimer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Cummins Africa has added a compressed natural gas engine technician training program to its training center in Calvin View in Gauteng to support the use of CNG in the region and the continent. Skalk Berger has the details. Power generation and engine firm Cummins Africa will train its own and clients technicians to maintain and repair its new compressed natural gas powered engines as well as its older engines. Cummins Africa Power Generation Director Alok Joshi highlights some of the main benefits for the company's customers in Africa. So what we are trying to do over here even today is we are coming up with a training program so when we bring this product in uh, we are able to support our customers as well. So this product is going into a bus application, so we should be able to make sure that the products, when they come for our routine maintenance and any issue that we might potentially have, we are in a position to resolve it. So a critical area for us to focus on is customer support. And we are not just doing that in South Africa. We have a product range of gas-powered products which goes right up to 60, 60 and then 91 liters. Uh, this is the smaller one over here, but this will be used in predominantly in the automotive applications, I would say. The investment that we have made over here in terms of our capability not to just bring in our own technicians to support them, we also get our customers, technicians over there, train them to make sure the product has the right uptime. We have a master rebuild center right opposite this particular place uh, where we have the capability to overhaul our own products. We do a lot of mining overhaul uh, over there uh, across the road, a lot of 50s, 60s, uh, 50 and 60 liter product. Uh, so Cummins is uh, not just investing in making sure that the products are coming the right way into the market, but we are also making sure that the products get supported very well in the market. The key markets that we have, you know, uh, South Africa, Southern Africa, you know, Angola, Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, in all these countries, Cummins has its own company, own distribution uh, you know, network. And the rationale, like I said, behind that is consistent product support, and we want to make sure our customer and our product uptime is, is uh, the highest. When I say key markets, it is our engine business, predominantly looking from a uh, you know, mining, uh, automotive sort of perspective. Power generation, again, is a big, big area for us. Cummins Africa senior trainer and certified compressed natural gas trainer Devold Lombard provides an overview of the engine and how companies can repower their engines to run on compressed natural gas. The ISL 9 gas is pretty much 80% of a uh, earlier Cummins engine, the ISL 9 diesel counterpart. So 80% of that has been used and we've implemented pretty much the, the diesel system. We changed the diesel system and incorporated the gas system into it. So it's your fuel system, we've got exhaust gas recirculation on this engine as well as the three-way catalyst. But the base engine itself is on a tried and tested Cummins product which is the ISL 9 gas. If customers want to repower to a, a ISL 9 gas, the, the dimensions of the engine itself is very similar to your, your diesel counterpart. So there's not much different when it comes to your engine bay area. Uh, obviously your diesel tanks has to come out and because gas takes up more space than diesel, uh, you need gas tanks. So generally on, on bus applications you've got five uh, different canisters that contain your compressed natural gas which equates to around 75 to 100 diesel literage equivalent. So uh, they need to take the space aspect into consideration when it comes to compressed natural gas storage. There are some customers that uh, are using these engines in buses as well. Uh, as far as I'm aware there's around 40 buses in the Trani area that are using uh, this exact engine ISL 9 compressed natural gas. Other news making headlines this week. Cabinet sets up broadband war room amid policy spectrum uncertainty and transformational deal to change Avenge Groninger LTA's look and feel. Amid extended delays in the finalization of South Africa's ICT policy and a legal dispute over the auctioning of broadband spectrum, Cabinet has announced the formation of a broadband war room to address the uncertainty. In fast checking the implementation of the South African Connect strategy to connect schools, health facilities and government policies offices, the ICT policy will be finalized and approved. A broadband war room will be established to accelerate the implementation. Broadband war room. All the uh, relevant uh, ministers that are part of this ICT cluster will be part of that uh, war room. 
South African Construction and Engineering Group, Avenge, expects to conclude an empowerment transaction within months to further transform its Avenge Groenacre LTA business, which is on the cusp of moving into the black for the first time since 2011. For Groenacre LTA to grow and to be relevant in the SA context in future, they need to, to substantially transform not only from an equity perspective but also from uh, <clears throat> a look and feel perspective. And uh, in terms of that, we actually are quite advanced with discussions uh, on a potential transaction. But uh, we want to make sure that we do it right. Um, and uh, we're not at this point where we can actually um, disclose anything. But we, we, we see Greenwich LTA in, in, the, in the correct transformation configuration to be in a position to actually grow as an organization. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.